I finally got a clear night to demonstrate using CHDK to override settings in order to take nighttime photography. Um, I'm going to do it in two bits because you can override your ISO, you could override your shutter speed. The easiest one is to override the ISO, so that's the one that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to be able to, to film it outside because I don't have enough tripods and it'll be easier for me to preview the pictures for you, but I'm going to show you how to set it up first. So, if we get our camera going, don't know what's going on with the focus here. Ooh, there we go. So if we set up CHDK first, just going to activate it. One thing to mention, when you're using CHDK, the easier way to use the menu is to have your image in playback mode. If I go into the mode where I'm going to take a picture, if I go to use my CHDK, you'll start to see bits of the menu get cut out. That's where the camera's doing its normal operations because obviously CHDK isn't built into the camera. So this menu isn't really meant to be here. But if we just play, press the playback button now, you'll see that the menu doesn't get disturbed. It stays as it is because what's going on behind is just a preview of the picture. There's no other functions happening. So I'm just going to move this closer so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to go into the extra photo operations. And originally I used to say that you should uh, override your subject distance value for stars. So you could just press the left and it would go to infinity and it would focus as far as it could. But I've actually found recently that it's been easier to sort of zoom in a little bit, find a bright star and actually use the normal focus because with the infinity I was getting a lot of blur so it's up to you if you want to try using the infinity focus but I find that if you're alright to zoom in you'll get a pretty decent uh, focus anyway on the stars so this is our ISO here and we've got the value factor the value factor is going to times the top number so if the value factor was at 1, the ISO would be at 5, so that's a very, very low ISO. But if I had it on 100, it'd be 100 times 5, so it's a 500 ISO. So if I'm doing a normal long exposure, so here we've got 15 seconds here, and you'll see that the ISO is greyed out, it limits it to 100. Canon put this onto the, the camera as a... Uh, a safeguard basically so that they knew that the quality of the pictures wouldn't be too grainy because using a higher ISO can cause grain however you know it's up to us if we want to uh, mess around with the ISO that's my opinion anyway so we can use CHDK to override that setting you can see at the top here where I selected an ISO of 500 it's telling me at the top that that's been selected and also where I left on the infinity focus it's telling you how far it's trying to focus but as I said, I actually prefer just using the centre box, zooming into a star and locking a focus that way. So that's how you override your ISO. If you want to change it, you can you can do so here. Maybe if you only wanted sort of an 80 ISO, which is quite low, you just do 10 times 8 and that would do 80. Uh, one other thing. Bear in mind you're doing a 15 second shot so it is going to take 15 seconds to process so don't panic if you find that you've taken your shot and it's been busy for sort of 15 seconds. It's not You've not damaged your camera, that's how the camera works. And additionally, if we just look at the side of the camera, if you press the bottom of the back function wheel for the self timer, it's actually better if you put your self timer on 2 seconds just means that when you're taking a long exposure you can press the button and the camera will stabilise before the picture's taken sometimes you'll press the button and when you let go it shakes the camera and then you get blur so I'm going to show you some examples of what I did with the override on the ISO now a lot of people are going to say that I should have overridden the shutter speed because ISO causes more grain and noise but this is the simplest way to do it. I'm going to show you how to override shutter speed at a later date but it was very very cold outside and I was out there for at least half an hour so I'd rather not uh, die of pneumonia before I finally get this video out so that's how to do it. Uh, let me know how you get on with it and I will update with a video on how to override your shutter speed at a later date. Okay good luck!